You guys, have you seen where the sun is beefing somebody? Because the sun has been legit fighting me today. It's so jealous of my natural radiance. Hi, welcome back to my channel. How you guys doing? If you guys are new here, okay, please subscribe. And if you're a returning subscriber, like, no, if you're a returning viewer, like, you watch my videos. Anytime I post a video, you watch, but you're not subscribed. Why now? Why are you doing me like this? You know you like me. You know you like to watch me. Just click the subscribe button and click it now. What do you want me to do for you? <laughs> do you want me to toast you into clicking the subscribe button? Please click the subscribe button, okay? But if you are new here and you're seeing my face for the first time, hi, my name is Adeze and I identify as a billionaire wife, okay? I know that sometimes when I say billionaire wife, some people will be like, oh, how can you say you're a billionaire wife? Why can't you be the billionaire? Why can't you be the... Hello, in case you are new here, in case you don't know who you're talking to, I don't like stress, okay? I don't like suffering. I don't want to have to stress myself and be thinking of how to make money. What I want to be stressing myself with. Let me tell you guys who my partial role model is, okay? I won't say she's my real role model because she's, she's divorced, okay? Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, I don't even know her name. So, in that aspect, no. But the fact that this woman became a billionaire just because she was married to a billionaire. Some people will say, success is not sexually transmitted. It is, my dear sisters. <laughs> it is, my dear. Not it means to become a billionaire just because you are married to a billionaire. And what is she budgeting herself now with? How to spend the money. She's busy giving out almost all that money to charity. That is the part that I like, okay? I want my biggest trust in this life to be, how do I spend all this money? What charity do I give this money to? What project do I fund? That is what I want to be thinking of, okay? I don't want to be thinking of how do I make money? How do I make money? It doesn't really take you billions to become happy, okay? You don't need billions. You don't even need, you don't even need 500 million uh, dollars to become happy. So I consider myself a billionaire's wife in the making. <laughs> But pending where we get there, how do I manage my finances? That is what I want to talk to you guys about. Because you guys, you know, I'm turning 40 very soon. <laughs> See, I'm turning 36 this year. But in my head, I've already, I've already, once you've passed 35, what, what's remaining? You are 40, my dear sister, okay? You are 40. If I want to tell myself the truth, I feel like there's this timeline in my head of how much I want to make and how much like where I should be financially and I don't think I am there. No, I don't think I'm not there yet. Okay. But not being there yet is not even the problem. The problem is that I feel like the timeline I gave myself or I subconsciously give myself, I feel like that timeline is getting closer and I'm not close to my target yet. So that gives me concern. And yeah, I'll just tell you guys how I manage my finances and give you guys my, you know, personal experience. I'm not trying to preach to you guys. I'm not trying to tell you do this or don't do this or this is how you should save or this is how you should invest. I'm not here for that. I'm just here to give you my experience. If you want to learn from it, learn from it. If you don't want to learn from it, that's fine. If you want to just be here for the gist, then that's right up my alley because yeah, I like gist. So if you're just here for the gist, then you know, join the family. Okay. If you've not yet joined already, just subscribe. Okay. I feel like there's this timeline in my head. Okay. I've never really admitted it to myself until recently, but there's a timeline in my head because to be honest, I don't want to do this forever. So for me right now, YouTube is what I consider work. Okay. I don't want, I don't even like work. That's just the truth. I don't like it. But I mean, realistically, YouTube is what I consider work. I'm just fortunate enough that YouTube is also something like content creation actually is also something that I personally like, even though it has gotten to a stage where I don't like it as much as I used to like it. Um, I feel like I need a new hobby because YouTube content creation used to be a hobby for me. And you know, right now it is actually work because I make money from it. I don't make as much money as I would want or hope, but I'm making enough money to call it actual work. Okay. I need money to work for me, but right now I have not gotten to my target, um, you know, amount that I would like to have that would work for me. Okay. Because trust me for you to get rich, you cannot become rich just by saving money. Okay. That's facts. I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's actual facts. You can't become rich just by saving. You cannot save your way out of poverty. You cannot even save your way out of being middle class. The only way for you to get to the next level is for you to make more money. Okay. And you know, invest that money or you whatever but you have to make more money so the first thing i'm trying to do is to try and make more money but sometimes i feel like i'm limited by so many things 
which is or one of the main things that limits me sometimes is just having a family and trying to balance you know, doing content creation and taking care of my family. And in my own case, if I had to choose, I will always 100% choose, yes, my family. You guys get it, okay? <laughs> I don't think I'll ever choose my job over my family. Of course, let me tell you guys something, okay? This is just like a personal pressure that I give myself sometimes. It doesn't mean that it is such a big burden on me that, ah, oh, I want to make money. No, 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 it's not a big burden on me. And that brings me to my second point. And my second point is that one of the ways that I have been able to, like, one of the ways I feel that I have been able to escape that financial pressure and just live with myself and be happy with myself is that I have reduced, I've never really had, like, high taste or whatever before. As much as I say, oh, I want to be a billionaire wife, I want to be this, I want to be that, the truth of the matter is that money is not really that important to me, okay? Like, I mean, I need money to survive. I need money to, you know, function. But I don't need so much money, right, to be happy, okay? So, but even at that, I have further reduced my expectations and my taste to the extent that I was talking with my friend recently and we're talking about, oh, what we're going to, like, talking about shopping and stuff. And I was like... Do you, know, do you know that I don't actually have any designer thing that I'm dying to have? Like, it's so funny. Like, if I know designers now, some, not even all, I know some, just a few, like the obvious ones. <laughs> I only know the obvious ones. I don't know those, like, I only know the obvious, the obvious ones, right? I don't have any designer item that I'm like, ah, I wish I can get this LV bag or this Chanel, this or this. I don't have, like, I, I legit don't have. When I see those things, oh, the bag is fine finish the monetary value of the bag does not even cross my mind okay and i'm like that with almost everything i just look at things based on how beautiful they look to me i don't rate things by oh this is bugatti this is i don't know to me i don't even know the difference with all those things i don't even know their logos i don't I, all i know is that does the car work is the car fine that's it for me, right? So, I don't have anything that... I don't even have any shoes. I don't have jewelry. Like, my jewelry... This is not Shein I bought my jewelry from. I buy my jewelry... I buy my jewelry from Shein. I bought this stuff from, like, a regular store in Canada. I don't even know what is trending. <laughs> it's that bad. I don't know what is trending. I don't know the designer that is trending. I have realized that what is helping me a lot is the fact that my tastes i can afford my tastes basically okay i don't have an expensive taste so anything i actually want i can actually afford it right i'm not just barely afford it like i can afford it well because i'm not going for very very expensive things okay so that has helped me manage my myself i don't have that financial pressure i'm not like oh, i need money to survive i need money to this no even when i'm thinking of the money that i'm saying oh i have a timeline of money i should earn is because i want to have extra money like a lot of extra money to take care of people other people not even myself not my kids because i mean we got that covered right i feel like i spend more on other people yearly than i spend on my actual self okay i don't even know if it's a conscious thing i don't think it's even a conscious thing i think it's just being it has always been my personality but the fact that i'm now older is even more my personality is now coming out more because i really don't care when I say I don't care, like I really, I legit mean I don't care, okay? And no shade to people that actually like those things, which is the funny part about it, right? When I see somebody wearing designers and a person likes it, I'm happy for them that they like it, okay? But I don't covet, I think that's, that's the word, I don't covet what they have. I don't think there's anything I want right now that I cannot afford, okay? And that's because my taste has met my financial capacity so that takes me now to savings how am i able to save my money the truth is that you need a lot of discipline to be able to save especially when you are in a country like this for those who don't know i am in the uk and if you live in any western country you need a lot of discipline to be able to save like first of all things are expensive okay so if you're not careful, you're going to be in debt. And they allow you have, like, they, they give you credit anyhow. So if you're not careful, you're going to be in debt really easily. So personally, it is important to me that I actually save money every month. So once I get paid, both from YouTube or for any other, you know, job I do, like maybe Instagram or whatever, once I get that money, I save first. Okay, once I even get, like, my monthly allowance from my husband, I save first. 
that is the only way to work for someone like me. I don't have that self-control of spend what you need to spend and then save later. I don't have it. Like, I know myself. It's not something that I'm about to develop at this age. It's not a skill I'm trying to develop now because I know that I beg, I will always keep defaulting. So, I always, always save first. I just, once my money just comes like this, I remove whatever is supposed to be the savings. And sometimes I over-remove, okay? So, even though, let's say now, I'm supposed to live with 100 naira, right? Let's say I'm supposed to live with 100 naira. I know that 100 naira is what I can live with and I get, let's say, 150. Instead of me to save 50 and just stay with the 100 naira, I will save like 70 and then stay with 80, okay? Is that is it 80 or 60? Whatever. Yes, 80. And I'll stay with 80, right? Now, if I try throughout that month not to go above that 80, but for some reason I have to, I need more money, I will now go back and collect the 20 from the um, 70 I saved, right? So that's how I am able to actually save more money. Because sometimes there are some months that I will remove 80 or 70 and I will live within that 80 and I'll be fine with it. Okay. I won't need to go back and collect from the 70. Okay. Does that make sense? So yeah, that's one way I'm able to increase my savings as well is by removing more than I even, I'm even supposed to save. I can remember I'm like, whatever, if I have to, I can go back and go and collect the money from where it is. Right. And sometimes I, I don't really go back to go and collect that money from where it is. So it means that that month I was able to live you know, below my means or within my means, okay? So that's how I'm able to save. Then for investments, I've gotten these questions a lot. For investments, I can't really tell you guys how I invest my money because I don't invest my money myself, okay? I actually just give it to my husband to invest for me. I know the places where he invests the money, okay? There are some dollar investments that some banks do. There are some bonds. Uh, what do they call those things? So... I've got to know of what, all those things that he does, Sha. But anyway, I know where the money is. I have access to the money if I want it, you know, but I, I, I just don't care that much. <laughs> I don't want to run into myself, okay? Because I know myself, I'm not that diligent with it, so I don't care to run into myself. Uh, for those who will be like, ah, that's risky, that's risky. For me, I have accessed it and I don't have that risk in my marriage, okay? I'm not saying that you should go and do it in your own marriage because some of you legit have that risk in your marriage. You are married to somebody who cannot save money or who cannot keep money or you're married to somebody who is wicked who tomorrow is going to take all your money and chop it okay i'm not married to that kind of person so i'm married to somebody who is very very open with his finances who you know lays it all out on the table for me and i have access to everything i need to have access to i don't have that risk in my own marriage but it's not something i advise women to do okay so and i'm somebody who naturally i'm again maybe because i'm not really that attached to money i don't really care if chop them now chop them <laughs> Stop and will I die? Like I can't I can't go through life just touch lighting everybody and just trying to mark everybody. I'm like, I can't go through life that way. I'm not saying it's a bad thing if you are that kind of person, but I'm saying for me, for my personality, for my life, for my mental well-being, I'm not that kind of person. Like, I can even leave my money with my sister for a very long time to help me manage and to help me save. In fact, the person who has helped me save the most in this life is actually my younger sister because she's very good with finances, okay? She's, she read accounting, but even aside the fact that she read accounting, she's very, very good with finances. So, if I want to save, like, a lot of money this year, right like I'm, i want to maybe i have a goal coming up even though i don't yeah but whatever but let's just say <laughs> i don't have a goal but i'm just saying let's say i had a goal now that i want to buy let's say a new car right and i want to save money the best person that can help me save that money is my sister because if you just transfer money to her like this time she will just help you keep the money like you don't need to even be thinking oh hey let me keep the money in my account i just transfer it to my sister and once i transfer it to her that's it i won't even try to get the money back because i know that she will not even answer myself she will she will discourage you like if you got me tell you she will tell you no why don't you just save the money why don't you just do this one you know so i'm that kind of person that if i see who has like i i i, I trust people well it's just my sister and my husband Sha. when i'm saying i trust people it's just the two of them Sha. <laughs> It's just the two of them. But I have studied them. I have, you know, seen how they do things. And I trust them wholeheartedly when it comes to money. So, yeah, my recommendation for anybody who, you know, maybe needs it, right? I'm not saying you should do what I do. But I'm just saying, that's your weakness, okay? You know in your heart that you're not somebody that can be trusted to save your own money. Then look for people around you 
who you can trust, okay? At least one person. And if you don't have that one person in your circle, then maybe you should reevaluate things, okay? <laughs> maybe you should reevaluate things, okay? You should have at least one person in your circle that you can trust with your money, okay? And, you know, you don't even have to trust the person 100%. You can actually draw up, you know, contract and stuff like that. You know, there are, there are ways around it, but again, I'm not advising anybody to do it. I'm just telling people what may I do for myself right so because i trust my husband and i trust my sister that's the only way i'm able to save money and you know my sister is more for my saving while my husband is more for my investing and when it comes to choosing the best investment right let me even let me even get into the investment part okay so i'm not going to recommend like one particular thing to do but for me personally i just go with the ones that have sensible returns okay 10 percent is okay for me 8%, I mean per annum, yes, per year, is okay for me. Okay, uh, 12% per annum, 15% per annum is okay for me. I'm not looking for 20%, I'm not looking for 30% per annum, I'm not looking for 5% per month, I'm not looking for... Eh, eh, see, I just go for the sensible ones, the tried and tested ones, the ones that have very, very low risk. That is the ones, those are the ones that I actually do, okay? And those are the ones that even my my husband and my sister do. All of, in fact, as I said, two, two of them are like, you know, almost the same in different ways, right? My sister and my husband, they always go for sensible investments that give you sensible returns yearly, okay? And one thing my husband has always taught me is that it is not about the now now. He's playing the long game, okay? So it's not about, oh, I'm trying to make uh, 50% this year. No. That your 10%. Are you able to make it this year and reinvest it and compound it over the years? Okay, because when I look back, the times I lost the most money was when I was trying to get quick returns that was when i lost the most money okay all the times that i've had just diligent that my sister had helped me or my husband had helped me and we've had just diligent sensible returns and we just keep you know uh, uh, reinvesting and compounding it and growing it those are the times that i have made the most money over the years does that make sense so imagine if you had been compounding let's say one million naira for the past 10 years you will make more money or you right now you will have more money in your account than somebody who tried to make, you know, invest 1 million, make 1.3 million. The person tried to invest it and then lost the whole 1.3 million. 10 years down the line, then your 1.3 million don't go. But I still have my own 1 million and it has compounded over the years and it is now a lot of money, okay? And mind you, Yes, you will say, okay, I lost that money then, but I've made the money back in other ways. Me too, I was making money in other ways. Like, it's not like I was sitting down just looking at my 1 million turned to 1 point, 1 point, uh, 1 million 30,000, then 1 million 60,000. Hey, hey. Me too, I was making more money and increasing my capital, okay, capital in quotes, right? I was increasing the principal, okay, yeah, principal is the word. Yeah, see me, see me using investment terms, okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> anyway i wasn't just sitting down either i was actually increasing my principal over the years over the years and then before you know what's happening because the way time flies the way time flies before you know what's happening 10 years has passed so that money that you are looking at ah, this small money this small money if you if you check how much you have made over the years it is a lot of money so that's it though that's that's how where i am right now especially since i know that i don't have a business i'm not doing like an actual business i'm not investing in a business my dear, you see those uh, sensible returns, those are the best, okay? Trust me, these are things you should teach your kids. They should play the long game. Because you'll be watching me now and be like, ah, so I'll not be, so after a whole year, I will not make 15,000 naira. After a whole year, that's so small. It might be small to you right now, but if you compound it over the years, as long as you keep saving it and you keep reinvesting it and you keep growing your principal because you're making more money, so you're growing your principal. So basically, you're saving, growing the principal and compounding it over the years. Trust me, that money you're looking at, ah, just 15,000 naira. You will look back and you're like, how did I get this, all these returns from just that 15,000 naira? Do you understand? So yeah, that's basically how I invest my money. Um, go and do your research. I'm not here to tell you guys any particular one to do because I don't think anybody's come and hold me. Oh, please, I don't think anybody's come and hold me. 
you, from everything I have said right now, you kind of understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so go and look for sensible investments to do. Go and talk to your bank. If you go to your bank, ask, ask them what kind of investment they have. If you bank with a good bank and you go and meet them, they will tell you all their options and they will give you, they will actually give you somebody that can sit down with you and explain these things to you. Then you can also go ahead and do your own personal research and also find out other ways to invest money. Um, if you are abroad, um, I think the equivalent of what I'm talking about is like um, all these IS, ISCs. I don't know. Is it ISCs they call them or RSC or something like that? Yeah? They're different like government-owned um, investment schemes or something like that. For me, that's usually the best bet. All those things that are government-owned. I mean, it's not like a government cannot collapse. What are the chances, okay? I'm not saying there is no chance, okay? There is no investment that is zero risk, okay? There's no investment because... I mean, if it's zero risk, it won't give you any reward. Are they, are they there to come and be? <laughs> are they there to come and be charity for you? They're not there to come and be nice to you, okay? They too, they're making their own money, okay? So there's no zero risk investments, but there are investments that have very, very, very low risk, and those are usually the investments that are tied to government or very, very big credible companies okay so if you want to use things like if you want to do things like buying shares there's some sites online where you can buy um from all these fortune 500 companies what do they call those things i forgot what they call those investments where you can buy from all those fortune 500 companies you can buy their shares if i remember the name i'll put it on the screen okay for no 401k is like your your pension just go and do your research is my point okay go and do your research you're on youtube every time watching yule doche did this to his wife yule doche um, uh, uh, called me doche a good that's all you are watching. No, my dear sister. I'm not saying you should not watch that one. Me too. I used to watch sometimes, okay? But also, go and check for other YouTubers that... There are so many YouTubers on YouTube that actually talk about finances, okay? How to save, how to invest, how to make money, how to do so. There are so many... In fact, if you even want to be very niche-specific, you can even Google stay-at-home moms. How stay-at-home mom in the UK are investing you know just google all these things and you will see so many results on it and do your research and find the best one and do it you have to make your money keep working for you and if you want to retire early okay if you want to retire early you have to increase your principal to the extent that your principal will be able to give you an that will be able to give you returns that will fund your life okay does that make sense so if you know that oh i want in the future i want to be living on let's just say five million per month okay that's your goal you want to be living on five million per month you just tell yourself that ah, if i cannot be getting five million per month i'm going to be okay like i mean even if you are, you get one billion per month you are going to be okay i'm just saying what's the minimum that you're like if i just get 200k per month i am fine What's that minimum? If your minimum is 200K, then go and do your research and just tell yourself, okay, even at the minimum of 10, let's say piggy vest, for instance, okay, let's say on piggy vest, the best you can get on piggy, it's not vest, <laughs> let's say the best you can get on piggy vest is 10% per annum, right? Then you do your calculations and say, okay, how much do I invest that will give me 10% per annum that when I divide it by 12 will give me 200K per month? Does that make sense? Yes, I think it does, okay? <laughs> That's how I'll be ask, asking and I'll be answering. But yeah, it does. So if you are still a millionaire wife or billionaire wife in the making, these are things that you can do in the meantime to just be, you know, getting ready. You know, getting ready. Those who are diligent in little will also be diligent in much, okay? You are testing the waters. <laughs> you are testing the waters. You are practicing for when you get to that level, right? So just practice well and do these things well. Don't be too quick to write off any investment because the return sounds tiny. Trust me. You said, ah, I cannot be investing in piggy vest when it's just 10%. Meanwhile, my friend who's doing business is making 30% per month. You two, you now jumped and went to go and do that business. You now lost all your capital. Waiting you gain. <laughs> Waiting you gain. Put your energy into having a job, save your money, invest it right, and just keep increasing your investment, okay? That's it. And then, and then for those of you who actually like to do business, more grease to your elbow. Increase your output so that you can make money as quickly as possible and you can save and also invest as quickly as possible. Okay, so if you can check the top billionaires in this world, they are making money and they are investing their money, okay? They are not just billionaires because they worked forever. Some of them have retired a long time ago and they still have, they, they still maintain that they are billionaire status, okay? It's not because they had 
trillions stacked somewhere and transforming to billions. No, it's because they have things that are generating those billions for them yearly without them actively working. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Who are my fellow billionaire wives in the making? Let me know in the comment section. <laughs> What are you guys doing while we are waiting? While we are waiting for our husbands to hammer. How are you guys making your money, saving your money, investing your money? Let me know in the comment section. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.